Greetings, dear ladies. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner steps away at this time. How does it feel, dear women, to have a book written about you? All of the channelings in the book that has been mentioned, all of them, were about you and Lemuria. What was life like? What did you do? How did it feel? Some of the basis of what you do in these meetings revolves around that time. It's a time basically of learning. That was what it was about. In fact, so many of the ceremonies that were carried out in Lemuria by women were mainly to teach the younger women in the ceremonies. There was so much teaching there about the core truths, the ones that would last on this planet and hopefully someday reawaken in the Akash of women all over the world who would remember the teachings of a shaman. It's why you're here. Of course, there are still those who would sit in the chair in this year and say, I can't really relate. I believe you, Crian. I can't relate. That's so common because we're asking you to remember a reality that was so long ago. But dear ones, it is the first etched memory of your Akash, the first life, the one with 23 pairs of chromosomes. So I'm going to take you back yet again and give you another memory to ponder, to look at. These things are real. The things that I give you now are real. They represent a reality of the distant, very distant past, but a reality that is carried within that which you have, which you call the Akashic Record. A record of all of your lifetimes and the things that you've learned and the things especially that emotionally impacted you. Nothing impacted you emotionally more than that of seeing the Star Mother for the first time. We've discussed with you a little of this. The Star Mothers did not do all the teaching. They left it to those who were direct descendants. Meli Ha was a direct descendant. And she taught many, many, mostly from children to adults, were feminine. But she had her times of teaching the boys as well when they were children. But they would branch off into that which was shamanic. And that was her specialty. But I want to tell you about that first meeting. There was a system. And we've described some of these things before. A system of meeting the star mother for the first time. If the children were too small, they wouldn't understand. And so you had to be a certain age. But the ones who actually saw the Star Mothers for the first time were always the girls. There was a time when the men, boys, children, adults, all saw the Star Mothers at certain kinds of meetings certain times of year. It was guaranteed. But the first time was always the girls. You met the Star Mother as girls of age for the first time. There would be another meeting of the boys and the girls and they would also meet the Star Mother. There was a system. It was an equal system very but the equality that we speak of 
was intuitively a quality. That the women were first because the women had the gift. They were going to become the leaders and the shamans. So as, as girls you, you lined up. You dressed for the occasion as best you could in Lemuria. And you knew you were about to meet a star mother. Off-worldly. How much did a child know? Truly. About these things. And you'd be surprised. Because for years, you had those around you point to the stars and say, this is where they're from. We have a piece of them. There was no talk of DNA. There was no talk of chemistry. There was instead talk about a piece of that which made them sacred, special, unique. And you had a piece of the Star Mother in you. And you knew it. Even as a child, you knew it. You also knew your destiny. That as you grew and become a young woman, there would be a time when you would be separated from the boys. Only in the teaching and the substance of the teaching. And it would be more advanced to things that you would have to then go on to do. There would be a great deal of teaching about intuition. And how to work with it and how to trust it. But there was nothing like that first meeting. You lined up and you came into a room, a specially prepared room, one that was only used to meet a star mother. And the thing about it, it wouldn't be today's method, is the star mother was already in the room when you arrived. Today there is a sense of drama. When you meet those who are important that you've come to see and you would wait and wait and come and sit and then somehow a sound would happen and they would arrive and everybody would be enamored. But the star mother was already there seated. She wasn't in a seat. She was cross-legged. There are really good reasons for this. And it is she was at a child's level already just sitting there so when the girls came in they would have no intimidation that they would see her already and realize she was seated and ready for them there was no glorious entrance so it would overwhelm them or make them feel that someone important was coming but they already knew of the importance of a star mother the other reasoning was this Star mothers were very large. They were tall. Taller than most humans are even today. This comes from a combination of things, including the fact that that's just how big they were. For their civilization, for their nourishment, all of these things you would understand because even generations of humans are now taller than they used to be. So it was a progress. It was evolution on their planet. For her to come in at full height would be startling to the children. And that's the last thing we wanted for the girls. And I say we. Dear ones, I was there. I was there in a form that was not that which is of any human. I was there because from the beginning the other side of the veil has always been represented in the sacredness of those from the stars part of the entourage even of those from the stars what you saw might surprise you if I described it today there she was so interesting that she didn't look real the Pleiadians always had something that you were never able to paint or draw when it came to the way they looked, the skin was slightly translucent, more than yours. And so it always showed a color. Now, dear ones, just so you know, the Star Mothers was a civilization of color. It wasn't 
Polynesian. It wasn't black. There was almost a tinge of other colors within the skin, but not so that you would then say it's blue or it's green. But because of the translucence, it was so beautiful and it was clear. It was riveting to look at this face. Not quite human and yet fully human. And when she opened her eyes and spoke, it melted your heart. And you remember it. It's the first thing that you ever saw that was out of this world. And you realized at that point that you would see her again and that she would teach you special things and be brought in for special times. There wasn't just one. But you only met one at a time. You learned a name you could not pronounce and there were some fun time when all the children would try. <laughs> but it was not pronounceable with your kind of vocal cord. And so part of the fun that you would have right immediately in this very sacred meeting as children, as girls, was to find a nickname that you could pronounce. Nickname for a day, you called it. So you could call her by name as you addressed her, which was the protocol. Each child was encouraged to say hello to the star mother and give her name. And she would then also give the name, the nickname of the day, to the star mother. It didn't trivialize anything. It made it one-on-one. -on -one. It made it easy and fun and loving. It was a mother, after all. You'll never forget it. It's etched into your memory. Earlier today, I channeled something called the spark. Something that occurs after the last breath is taken on earth when you go, oh my, oh my. And you realize everything you didn't know. And you see everything you couldn't see. And you realize you're magnificent. There's a spark in you, ladies. A spark that the men did not get. No boys ever met as boys, independent, with a nickname for a star mother. This was the beginning of the shamanship, the teaching, the relaxing of being with spirit. The loving that's with spirit. The part that is reverent but not worshipful. The part that knows the mother as you would know a mother. You could see the compassion, the love, and the eyes. And it took your breath away. I'm asking you to find the spark. That means the full realization and remembrance of how it felt. None of you are asked to recreate that in 3D or to paint it like it was. All of you can recreate it emotionally because you were there. When I say all of you, every single woman in this room was in Lemuria at one time or another. Every single woman in this room tonight met a star mother. That's not always the case. There's always seemingly some of those who just come to look around and wonder if they were included. But tonight, you all were. In these sessions, that is becoming more and more common. You feel the call and you're here. I'm asking you at some level to find that spark where you can emotionally remember that moment when you met that otherworldly person, person, a human looking very different from another place that became the seeds of who you are. And quickly, the color didn't matter. And quickly, the translucent skin didn't matter. And quickly, that voice that she had with the, with the double vocal cord didn't matter. And she was not odd or unusual because you fell in love. She emulated a compassion that is only possible from an ascended being who fills the room 
with such an emotional charge that all you want to do is sit and sing her name. This was the emulation she gave to you so that someday in a far distant future you could sit with other women and the exercise would be to find the spark and rekindle it and start learning what you'd forgotten. This is the truth and I would not tell you it if it were not so. Let the ceremonies begin. And so it is. <laughs>